Welcome to S Class, the highest tier in podcasting. With me is a man who speaks softly but has a gigantic stick. It's Robert. Am I the Teddy Roosevelt of anime? You are the Teddy Roosevelt of anime. And Amazing. I'm your host, the leader of the revolution, the president of podcast, Justin. So you're George Washington. Yeah, I figure we'd go that route. I, mean, I guess we don't really have a Mount Rushmore of S Class since it's mostly just the two of us. Yeah, it's mostly just what's a what's an iconic duo, Sonny and Cher of S Class. That's the first thing that came to your mind, <laughs> Sonny and Cher. What year is Rob, it? I got to get us back on track. I got to get us back on track. <laughs> Robert, today we are doing our mangaka Mount Rushmore, the greatest for mangaka of all time, or whatever your personal criteria you have for your manga Mount Rushmore. You see, that's my question here. Um, is it the like? not necessarily objective, but like the four people that should be agreed upon, or is it our personal Mount Rushmore? So the way I think we're going to do this is we'll draft our Mount Rushmores. We'll take turns picking our four folks based on whatever criteria we want. And then afterwards, we'll combine our Mount Rushmores into the ultimate S-class Mount Rushmore. Oh, I like it. Okay. But now also, are we going like, because you have Mount Rushmore is what? George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Teddy Roosevelt and Thomas Jefferson? Jefferson, yep. So it's like, it's kind of an eclectic crew. I mean, you got Washington and Abraham are pretty iconic. And then it's Jefferson and Roosevelt, who right. obviously are icons, but not necessarily, you know. The GOATs. Like FDR would probably be up there if it was talking about the GOAT presidents. Right. So is that being taken into account here? I think for our own individual criteria, we can decide that. Like for me, I was about to ask you what your criteria would be, but for me, it's my personal interest, their body of work, and then influence does play a part in this Mount Rushmore. I think there's okay. a difference between Mount Rushmore and like the top five of all time or top four of all time. I, there's a I slight agree. nuance. Yes. Um, and in terms of your criteria, what are you thinking? And I'm, I'm with you on that. I feel like it's more than okay. just who our favorites are. It's looking over the body of work and I guess influence as well. Yeah, we'll see how much each of these play into our choices. Uh, and again, this is in draft form, uh, so we can't pick from each other's. So Rob, with that being said, I am very nervously giving you the first overall pick. I'm going way off the board with the first overall pick. I would consider this the Teddy Roosevelt of my options. Why would you pick Teddy Roosevelt first in the draft? <laughs> Go ahead. I'm going. <laughs> Kyohiku Azuma of Yatsuba and Azumanga Dayo. I had that on my list. I didn't think he'd make the cut, but there Did you go. You really? Wow. <laughs> he wasn't in my top four, but he was on my list of honorable mentions. Tell us about Azuma and why he is the first overall pick on the Mount Rushmore of Bangaka. That's wild. <laughs> that is maybe the worst choice you've ever made. <laughs> Uh, it's the Anthony Bennett of first overall picks. For <laughs> why? That's insulting to Asuma. But oh no, yeah, I, I think there's merit behind it. It's because when you're forming your Mount Rushmore, you <laughs> want something that sticks out, but also deserves it. You know, Yatsuba is quite frankly the greatest slice of life manga of all time, and for uh -huh. me personally, slice of life is also my favorite genre. And then you have the Azumanga Dayo fame as well. I mean, that's that's another classic slice of life. It had ran its full course. It got through three years of a high school girls, you know, series. We made it. Like he he sets out to tell his stories and make us laugh and make us smile, and he does it. I think Azuma gives me the most smiles per page of any mangaka, and I think that's an important factor because. We tend to be miserable people, and if we're reading a manga That's and it fact. makes us smile, that is an important cog to this machine of, you know, our manga lives. I really like the way you look at this, even if it's not objectively a good pick. Um, smiles per page is a new currency, which we've never considered, and it's a it's good currency. Metric. Yes. Yeah, we should be using that metric in life more often, and I think I, I respect the pick even if it's not something I would do myself. In respect to you, I will choose what would have been my second overall pick, but it's honestly first in my heart, and I'm going with the legendary creator of Kaede Purple and Chameleon Jail. Do you know who this Excuse is? Excuse me? 
<laughs> Taki <What>? Hiku Noi. <laughs> 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 you know it's on my list as well. <laughs> of course. <laughs> the greatest of all time, Kaede Purple. You don't even know what that is. No. Um, that is his one shot of Rukawa before Slam Dunk, and it's awful. Right. It's just terrible. <laughs> it's um, awful. But, but in my personal opinion, he is the greatest mangaka of all time in terms of writing and art combination. I don't think he has ever hit that level of fame in the West where people would ever think of him as the GOAT, unless like you're a real manga person but what for, for me what puts him over the top is his body of work he's not like a one-hit wonder he's like slam dunk done in six years then he goes with vagabond and real and those aren't finished but i think each one of those is an evolution of the previous one in some way or the other and the art the writing his particular style is one of a kind and that's what puts him as my first overall pick yeah and i mean it's it's not even like you said just the writing he's also one of the goat artists in general. And when we're looking at a mangaka, obviously we have to look at art along with the writing and his, his art is gorgeous, especially when he takes the time to really, you know, flesh something out. Obviously in slam dunk, you have some like pages that are just like funny, but when he's like really right. designing the art of basketball, it is, it is gorgeous. Yeah. And I think if you look at a page, so a lot of times you'll look at manga and you're like, Oh yeah, this is generic manga art, a B C. They all kind of look the same. I think you can instantly tell it's his, and I was also going to say in terms of his influence, not only was he influential to the manga world, but he literally influenced basketball in Japan um, so much so that you have a couple of guys in the NBA today because of his work, which is like insane. No, he's an icon. He's influential. He has not only the greatest sports manga of all time, but one of the top historical mangas of all time as well. I mean, mm -hmm. he's he is absolutely deserving of this. He was also on my list, so... I, I could definitely see him being on our group uh, Mount Rushmore, the real Mount Rushmore of S-Class for sure. Now, I'm real curious if you're going to go left field again or if you're going to pick one of the two icons here. No, I, at this point, I'm going Akira Toriyama. Um, okay. I feel like Toriyama is a staple for any of these lists. He's obviously not the grandfather of manga, but I think he is the more successful dad of manga, you know, mm -hmm. where – the influence is further spread. The sales numbers are colossal for Toriyama. He has two hit series, even though, you know, Dr. Slump and Dragon Ball, but most people are in the West, at least are more Dragon Ball fans, obviously. Right. Um, and I, I know it's not manga, but the guy's art is a staple of Dragon Quest as well, which is mm -hmm. a 30 year long running JRPG. You know, he and is Chrono Trigger. Right, that Corona Trigger as well. He's simple, but so effective. And you don't have any mangaka writing a battle shonen or comedy without saying that Toriyama influenced them in some way, shape, or form. Yeah, maybe the most influential of the last 50 years. And his art is simple, but you have to compare that to relative to the times. It was innovative. I love Toriyama's art. I, I, even now, I, there's same face syndrome. You know, you, you'll have characters look almost identical and <laughs> interchangeable, like Trunks and the the uh, not Trunks, Android Seventeen, and the main character of the most recent Dragon Quest, same exact haircut, like yep. basically indiscernible. But it's still like so almost nostalgic. Like he can create a character today, and it'll still feel nostalgic. Yeah, yeah, I totally understand where you're coming from with that. And I was looking at Akira Toriyama, and I was like. I don't even think Dragon Ball's in my top 20 manga of all time, but he can't not be on the Mount Rushmore. No, absolutely. And I think I agree with you there where Dragon Ball as a whole is probably not in my top 15 or top 20, but the appreciation and respect I have for to Toriyama as a whole and what he's done and that little Dragon Quest edition does help me like bump him up a little bit because I do enjoy it. I think he has to be there. Yeah. And I think I have to... So I was really nervous when I gave you the first overall pick because I was like, he's either going to pick Akira Toriyama or the other person, and then I'm going to have to take Inoue or Oda, and I'm going to lose one of them to you. Uh, so I'll take Ichiro Oda, the GOAT of mangaka in this modern day. Historically, the best sales numbers ever. The 22-year-long running series of One Piece, uh, his body of work speaks for itself in those thousand eleven hundred chapters even if it has gone a bit downhill over the last couple of years you can't deny 15 years of greatness 
I mean, he's like individually one of the I think top three selling writers of all time in terms of like books. That's insane. That's an insane number. Man's got to outsell the Bible at some point. Uh, it's it's crazy. It's like him, J.K. Yeah. Rowling, and Jesus, Jesus, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the the god the god of manga uh Ichiro Oda so he he can't not no, be out I, here. Oda's such a simple choice and I I guess it didn't make a difference for me to not have him cuz when you're talking Oda and Toriyama Toriyama obviously influenced Oda and now everybody of the modern manga right. you know group is influenced by Oda and Toriyama so it it's basically a 1A 1B kind yeah. of thing at this point I think arguably not even arguably I think Toriyama is more influential. Oda is just better. If of that course, makes sense. that does make sense. I mean, yes, yeah. So I, I think Toriyama honestly deserves the first overall pick. I'd take Oda second if it were my personal list in terms of influence. But yeah, with those two out of the way, I think this is where it starts getting interesting. This is where we're going to see more of those Asumas and kind of guys from. You left know field, me. You knew I was going to start way out of left field. It had to be done. <laughs> I I wasn't sure whether your left fieldness was going to take over or your spite was going to take over. And you're like, I'm just going to take the entire treasure trove and you're just going to be no, miserable. No, no. Um, so I'm happy you didn't, but I could see either way. Now, Rob, the third overall pick for you. What are you thinking? Rumiko Takahashi. She's easily, easily like her body of work is more impressive than I think anybody we've spoken about. She has like five hit series. You have uh, Ursa Yatsura, mm -hmm. you have Inuasha, right? You have uh, Ranma Half, yep. um, Maizen Iku Ikiku is another one. I, I'm, I don't know that you've heard. That's a romance that one. one. Yeah. I, I mean, she's created so much good work. There's another one that I'm, I am forgetting that is also very well regarded. But she, she's done so much, like, and it's all quality. She's prolific. Yeah, she's incredibly prolific. She's been on for 40 years just creating you know, hit series. I think my problem with Takahashi is that I have read or interacted with three of her series. I have never gotten to the end of any of them because I think that she can kind of draw out a long story. And I also think that she is not great at writing romance despite <laughs> being a romance person because she's like, will they, won't they? So much tsundere. Um, like you said, her body of work speaks for itself, the, the quantity and relatively high quality. It's not a bad choice, but that's just my personal take on why what keeps her from in that goat status for me. I do respect what you're saying. There's a lot of meandering in everything she does where we're, we know what we're trying to work towards. And sometimes in the end, we don't even really get it definitively. But this is definitely a know. legacy <laughs> pick where you just like you have to look at her body of work. For sure. And, you know, in an industry, I'm sure even especially 40 years ago that was led by men, you know, she's coming out there and just putting out hit after hit. It's impressive. It's amazing. Yeah, I, I think her prolific resume is definitely worthy of this. What do you think puts her into your top four for you personally? Do you think it's Urusei Yatsura or do you think it's more Rama? I really like Urusei Yatsura. It's, it's so stupid, <laughs> but like the good kind of stupid and and it it none of her work that i've read takes itself too seriously but this is like beyond not taking itself seriously it's so unserious in such a funny stupid way and sometimes you just need that lightness that levity and i think the other thing that kind of pushes her into that realm is she's kind of like the godmother of waifu oh right? lum absolutely yeah yeah i didn't even think about that i am going to follow up on Takahashi with another female mangaka. I'm going to go with Hiromu Arakawa, who wrote Full Metal Alchemist. Oh, okay. Spoon. Very good choice. I have been rereading Full Metal Alchemist recently, and I forgot how amazing of an artist that she is. She has this way of kind of mixing in like very serious topics and very great art with these like very chibi hilarious scenes literally in tweet like someone's face could literally get blown off and then you have like a chibi <laughs> ed and alphonse being like oh my god so scary like on the side and just the juxtaposition always makes me laugh so much but also it's just such a solid foundation of a manga where there's no there's no bullshit there's no like naruto power level scaling um and she has a cast of maybe 15 to 20 characters that are all just excellent Blow. there's no like two or three stars that shine right. so much above the rest 
that it just feels like a real cast in a real world that I really love. I respect that pick. That that's a good pick. I I like that aspect of being able to transition between like a serious moment and a fun moment. Like that's a tough skill to have, and if she nails that, you know that's better than probably ninety percent of mangaka. Yeah, I think the difference between her and a lot of shonen boy writers is that she's like just a good writer and she can write a romance and she can write a story. Whereas I think the teenage to early 20 boys who are writing a lot of these shonen classics are just like testosterone filled, like, oh, what's the next cool technique I can think of? Uh, which is tons of fun, but not necessarily good <laughs> right. writing. And at some point after you read a ton of those, you you know, you just lose interest. You can only do the same thing so many times. Yeah. Rob, we have two spots left overall for our Mount Rushmore's. There's a lot of mangaka to pick from. This is a this is the weird spot. Yeah, I'm a little anxious because there's one that the both of us should have picked, and I don't know that you will pick him if I don't, and he has to be here. But I also want to kind of have, you know, different conversations. So I, I'm not sure what to do here with my last pick. I think you should pick what you think is best, and then when we reconcile at our combined list, we can kind of blow the whole thing up if we need to so my last pick then isn't it's not off the board but it is a little unique and different it's both okay. oba and obata of death note bakuman right yeah that was on my list as well but you have to pair them that you have to pair them yeah i think you have you, to and you know they're they're on that mount they're, they're they're the same head we don't even know what either of them look like so that's fine i think <laughs> They're like a homunculus with two heads coming out. It works, or it's just Ryuk. Uh, <laughs> that's so disturbing. <laughs> tell tell us what you think about Obata and Oba. I mean, if Dragon Ball was the thing to bring anime to the West, I feel that Death Note was kind of the thing that legitimized it. Death Note, I feel like, is the mm. first thing that people watched that wasn't just, you know, fan service, battle, shown in fights, power-ups... Death Note was the first time that people, I think, saw anime as being able to tell an overarching story that was substantial and had some purpose. Um, and then there's Bakuman, which I just I just personally love. Uh, it's it's just really cool to see the inner workings of Shonen Jump and how the manga industry works. And that in itself, just them being able to tell us all of that feels like it works so well for them to be on our list of mangaka mount rushmore they're the ones that have given us a look at just how the manga industry works in japan i i think that's a great pick i think obata is also one of the best or one of the most iconic mentors of mangaka i've read like he taught the guy who did kenshin and he taught like a whole list of other folks maybe oda as well uh were mentored by obata and i think that having death note and bakman both in your portfolio is like amazing you have this thing that's very dark and grim and intellectual and then you have something like bakuman which is so pants on head stupid at times but also so informative it's like a yin and a yang that really makes it a great balance absolutely i mean bakuman tells us like such a real story while also having such outrageous characters and it, it <laughs> just plays both of those so well and so straight in a way too despite the fact that it has quite frankly as we've both discussed, the worst romance in the history of media in general. But maybe some of the <laughs> best in all of media in general. Agreed. Because it's so bad. Um, I will also go kind of left field. It's another mangaka you're not too familiar with, which is Naoki Urasawa. And this is the guy who wrote Pluto, 20th Century Boys, Monster, and a few others. If I may, Justin, I actually picked up his um, book of one-shots. I think it's called Sneeze. And a lot of them were really good. I really enjoyed it. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, I've heard of Sneeze, but I haven't read it. It's great. You, I'll, loan, I'll loan it to you for sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely take you up on that. I think what Urasawa does different than almost everyone, I think it's like what I was saying about Arakawa in terms of just being able to write. Um, he, he could have just written novels instead of writing manga, <laughs> but he's also such, such an amazing artist as well that he can do both and like, he could write a suspense thriller novel series, um, and it would be fantastic. His characters feel very grounded. They're not too over the top. And it's much less about being anime and manga and more just about great storytelling. And I make it a point to 
read one of his works every year just because they're so well written and so good that it's like kind of a different flavor of anime and manga that I want to experience at least once per year. Now, I know you said that um, he's great at he could just be writing these as novels, but in Sneeze, he's also capable of telling like a nice cohesive mystery in like 25, 30 pages. So he's capable of doing that as well. I would love to see that because I also think that sometimes he does suffer from kind of like having, you know, like that horse, that horse meme where it's like, yes, you know, the like horse the meme where it's the like, body really is well, like, yeah. <laughs> and then like the head's like, huh? I don't exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I feel like sometimes he does that where it's like, oh, you drew this out a little bit too long. But um, in general, I think he still deserves to be up there. And I'd love to see him in that 25 page chunk, or maybe he can just get to the point while still having yeah. the storytelling chops interesting this was a very very interesting conversation yeah i thought i think we both thought that we were going to take someone can we throw a couple of honorable mentions out there before we combine our s class mount rushmore i i think the biggest probably um neglection that people would bring up is mura mura for sure yeah the author of berserk it doesn't do it for us personally to make it to the top i think he'd be in there if we were just talking artists which could be a different Mount Rushmore we could do. Absolutely. Um, I mean, storytelling, he's fantastic storyteller, so I don't want to discount that. I was thinking you were going to say Raikou, obviously. I, I I was, that's what I was talking about and hinting at at the end yeah. was Raikou. Um, obviously, Gash Bell is both of our, one of our favorite series of all time. I kind of just thought you'd say it at some point, but <laughs> we didn't get there. I was so tempted. I think the only thing that stops it is, his influence is probably so minor relative to some of these other monsters. But it's and huge on us. It is huge on us, which might make him work into our combined Mount Rushmore. And I also think that his body of work, I need to spend more time with some of his other stuff like Animal. You remember that one? That one was just yes. so freaking weird. And yeah, I, I could get not into get into it. it. <laughs> <laughs> and it almost hurt his resume for me than help it. So I, I would give that a second chance to see if I could look at his whole body of work and say, oh, yeah, this guy's extra special. I also, among some of my picks, had uh, Richiro Inagaki of iShield 21 and Dr. Stone. Mm. I know we both love iShield 21, and I really enjoy Dr. Stone as well. Um, sometimes I even think I prefer iShield 21 to Slam Dunk as my favorite sports series of all time. The problem with that is you also have to consider Murata, right? Murata and right, who, uh, what is the Korean manga artist Boichi. who does Boichi? Boichi the Doctor uh, Stone, yeah. Right, so like you have two S class level artists on his team, so you you can't do that two headed dragon like we did with Obata and Oba. Exactly, yeah. That's what I think kept him from our actual Mount Rushmores. Same for Murata because his art for One Punch Man and Aisha Twenty One is like up there, could be arguably the best ever, but he doesn't do the writing as well so it's nothing can be purely his own yeah i um, i agree with you there one last one i i do want to give a special call out to is osama tezuka who you slightly of course the grandfather yeah. of all manga yeah he's sort of like the george mikan of manga he's not going to be on anyone's mount rushmore you just have to respect that he was the goat of the 1950s or earlier but like i think we've kind of evolved past him at this point i think he is the man that built the mount rushmore he built the foreheads. Right. That's well said. Yeah. Just want to pay my respects to him. And then there's a whole bunch of Absolutely. others that really could be on this list. But with that being said, Rob, the S-Class Mount Rushmore. I say we start with Washington and we say Toriyama, right? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I feel like this could be quick. I don't know how much you're going to agree or disagree. It might might end up being a fight, but... I think three of them are locks, right? Can we just say them? I think Toriyama is first. I think yep. Oda goes has uh, follows up. I yep. think uh, Inoue is at yep. three. That's my that's my third lock. The fourth, I don't know. We must discuss fourth. Yes. And is it is um, it clearly Makoto Raiku who didn't make either of our Mount Rushmores, but makes <laughs> our combined Mount Rushmore is what I was thinking. I think that's the Teddy Roosevelt, right? It might be the Teddy Roosevelt. <laughs> um, who else did you have in mind? I would have said. Takahashi, Rumiko Takahashi, honestly. Um, I just I have such respect for her body of work and what she did. I'm sure there are a lot of female manga artists that like look for up sure. to her as a god. 
for what she, you know, did and the door she opened. Um, but you know, this is our personal one and it's, it's not like we are in love with any of her work. No, I, I respect all of her different pieces of work, but actually I probably said some really mean things about Inuyasha, but I still respect her and her <laughs> body of work. Yes. Uh, but I think it's got to go Makoto Raikou, just the redheaded. Step it's got to be Raikou. Yeah. And you're like, what the fuck are you Absolutely. doing here? Who invited you to this mountain? <laughs> but here you are standing next to these giants. I cannot wait to see uh, a nice little thumbnail that has the three heads of Toriyama, Oda, Inoi, and then the fourth one of Makoto Raikou. I'm going to do Gash Bell like, with his face and his big smile while he looks up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's perfect. That's a good looking Mount Rushmore, though. I'm loving it. It's can't be better than that. Well, thank you, Robert, for joining me in determining our mangaka Mount Rushmore. Maybe we can do this again with our favorite artists, our favorite movie directors. But um, thanks again, and thank you all for listening.